the phosphorus load, however much phosphorus you're eating, appears to stimulate this FGF23. So if you eat a higher percentage of plant-based protein, you're going to have a lower FGF23. Potassium. Now, this is the one that really makes people afraid, and rightly so. You know, if potassium, phosphorus is kind of a longer, slower thing. Potassium can cause heart problems really, really fast. So it is something to be careful about. It is a legitimate concern. However, I think we go about it in the wrong way. Meat is enhanced with potassium additives. And again, these are much more highly absorbed. You know, if you're eating fruits and vegetables, whatever's in there is what's in there. You're, it's, there's no additives. And, and even better, there's fiber in there. And fiber blunts the absorption of potassium. It increases transit time. So there's less absorption. Um, also, you need to take certain medications into consideration because sometimes it's not the diet at all that's raising your potassium. It's certain medicines that you may be taking. But this is pretty interesting. So there was a study that looked at um, dietary potassium intake and mortality in hemodialysis patients. And so they identified the top 10 sources of dietary potassium in these patients. And what they saw, this is what they saw, beef, chicken, Mexican food, hamburgers. Then we get to legumes and fresh fruits and juices and things like that. So like I said, these things are enhanced. They are laced with potassium additives and they are actually what people are eating that's driving their potassium up. But practitioners always want to run to the fruits and the vegetables because of that historical k dialysis diet. Here, I'm just giving you an example of like chicken versus chickpeas um, and potassium amounts there. So you can just look at those and realize that it's really not that different. And you have the, the um fiber binding the potassium in those plant-based sources. What about non-nutritional causes of hyperpotassium? So <clears throat> a lot of times when someone has a high potassium, they want to run to the diet every time. But um, did you know that if you are in that acidotic state, remember acid-based balance, if your body is in an acid state, I'm going to go over this on the next slide, your potassium will be higher. Um, same with high serum glucose. Um, certain medications, if you are taking an ACE or an ARB, so those are like things that end in Pril or Artin, those will raise potassium levels. Certain diuretics raise potassium levels. So that may be something you want to ask your doctor. Do any of my medications that I take, do they cause my potassium to be high? Um, if you are in a malnourished starvation state, if you have chronic constipation, your body will reabsorb that potassium from the stool. Um, if you have an infection, if you have a GI bleed, a blood transfusion, all these things can cause high potassium. So before we run to diet first and begin to stop eating fruits and vegetables, which you need, um, let's look at some of these other things. And so what is the relationship with acidosis? You'll, you'll begin to see that all these things go together, right? Animal protein causes your body to have to get rid of nitrogen waste. It causes your body to be more acidotic. It causes your body to be more inflamed. It doesn't have fiber, which helps the gut. And if you're acidotic, now you've got a potassium problem. So do you see how this plant-based, I'm talking about your whole body, a whole food plant-based diet affects all of these things. Um, Potential renal acid load. Okay. So we've already talked about this, but if you are in an acid state, potassium likes to be inside the cell. But if your body is acidotic, it will cause that potassium to go outside the cell into the blood and raise potassium levels. So this is another reason why you need to pay attention to that potential renal acid load. There are a few cautions with potassium. Remember, we talked about the very first. Um, at the very first, the case study of the dialysis patient who had that one high potassium is because she was grinding um, and using high potassium fruits and vegetables and smoothies that can create problems. Same with juices. Another thing that you never want to do is use a salt substitute like no salt, light salt, anything like that, because instead of those being sodium chloride, they are potassium chloride. So what are we going to do instead? We're going to go back to those spices that are going to lower your inflammation level without salt. That's what we'll do for that. Okay. 2020 guidelines. Again, remember this has been updated. Potassium, same thing. It is individualized to you. If you are a peritoneal dialysis patient, you likely don't have a potassium restriction. If you're a hemodialysis patient, you may or you may not. Your potassium may run low. If you're a pre-dialysis patient, most likely you don't have a potassium restriction. As you move along, if you're late stage pre-dialysis, 
you may have a potassium restriction. There is no blanket number. Work with the dietitian and figure out what is right for you. All right, now I do want to talk about, I could talk to y'all about all the comorbidities that go along with chronic kidney disease. Um, probably the, if, if I, if I had to pick the second, the first one's going to be heart disease. If I had to pick the second, probably hypertension, but if you'll just eat a plant-based diet and lower your salt intake, you'll be good on hypertension. But this one, because I tell every patient I work with, if you're a kidney patient, you're a heart patient because cardiovascular disease accounts for 40 to 50% of deaths in patients with chronic kidney disease. So I want you to be careful with your heart if you're a kidney patient, okay? All the things we've talked about, fiber, a healthy gut, a plant-based diet, antioxidants, lowering inflammation, low acid, high bicarb, all those things also help with heart disease. The whole patient, we're talking about the whole patient. So traditional causes of heart disease, hypertension, um, limit salt, plant-based diabetes, there's a strong association with both uh, chronic kidney disease and cardiovascular disease, but the, this is a more of an, um, a um, traditional cause of cardiovascular disease in, in kidney patients. And then dyslipidemia, so high LDL cholesterol, low HDL, you know, um, a high total cholesterol, laying down that fat inside the arteries and veins, that traditional, you've probably heard of it a million times, you've probably heard of it in this conference, in this whole series. Um, those are traditional causes and they still apply to you as a kidney patient. However, there are non-traditional causes that are very specific to kidney patients. One is high potassium levels. High potassium levels do interfere with the electrical signaling of the heart. So when I talk to you about potassium, yes, still be careful, but no, don't put a blanket restriction on yourself. Know your body, know your labs and follow along. Know your medications. Um, things such as that vascular calcification. So if your phosphorus is high, if your FGF 23 is high, you will begin to lay down phosphorus and calcium in your arteries and veins. So what are we going to do? We're going to eat plant-based phosphorus where we don't absorb it. And we're going to lower phosphorus and we're going to lower FGF 23. Inflammation. If you are inflamed as a kidney patient, you will also have inflamed lining in your arteries and veins. What are you going to do? You're going to eat lots of antioxidants from fruits and vegetables to lower that inflammation and help that endothelial lining. One thing that we haven't talked about is anemia. Um, because your kidneys, this is another wonderful thing your kidneys do. They're so important. Your kidneys produce something called erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone. And erythropoietin leaves the kidneys and goes to the bone marrow and says, hey, we need to make more red blood cells. When your kidneys begin to decline, they won't do that anymore. And so we need to correct anemia. That is going to be, that is going to be more times than not a medical intervention with your doctor, like a medication. So if you see your hemoglobin is low as a pre-ESRD patient, I want you to be an advocate. I want you to say, my hemoglobin is not where it should be. A lot of times doctors will wait until it's very low before they treat. If you feel bad, please speak up for yourself and say, I feel bad and I want my anemia treated. If you're in dialysis, they will definitely treat your anemia. Okay, so that was a lot of science. I've given you a few practical tips, but I just want to talk to you about just some simple things. So one is, if you need them, if your potassium is high and you've done everything else, um, and it's not your medications, there are like potassium fruits and vegetables. You can still eat fruits and vegetables strawberries, broccoli, cabbage, apples, carrots. There's more. These are just the ones I'm highlighting. So find a list of low potassium fruits and vegetables and just focus on those. What about eating out? Um, so let's just talk about some tips there. So in the left side of your screen, you're going to see this little purple cow called Happy Cow. This is an app on my phone and you can put it on yours too. And it'll tell you, you just put in your zip code or you can just open it up and it'll say, show everything nearby. And it'll show you every plant-based restaurant nearby. Sometimes, for instance, if you live in Mississippi and you go to Mississippi Delta, it's going to say nothing found, no results found. So then you have to know, okay, then what can I do? Delis are usually pretty helpful. Um, you can usually get salads there. Um, you can get veggie sandwiches there. Um, uh, um, ethnic restaurants like Asian, Indian, Mexican, those usually have plant-based options. 
The problem with those sometimes is that they add a lot of salt. Okay, so here's the nice thing about salt in restaurants. If you go to a sit down restaurant like this, you can ask them to produce your food with less salt. If you're eating fast food, that is not an option because in fast food restaurants, that food comes basically prepackaged. It is what it is. They just warm it up. So avoid fast food. Um, but if you eat at a sit down restaurant, you, you can ask. Also remember that um, much of the salt in food comes in the form of like sauces and salad dressings. So just get those on the side. Now you're going to think it's really weird, but at the bottom, I have a steakhouse. <laughs> you may be like, okay, you just told me to stay away from animal protein. And now you're telling me to go to a steakhouse. The reason I'm saying that is because steakhouses have sides. So instead of ordering the steak with the sides, just don't order the steak, just order the sides, order, you know, a sweet potato and broccoli and um, corn or fruit or whatever they may have. And so that is another option. Um, plan, set your system up for success. So people, many times they have great intentions, but their system, they, they, they fail because their system is not in place. Um, the system many times is meal planning. Every Sunday, I take bowls and I lay them out all over my kitchen table and I make salads. I'll put greens and all of them and carrots and all of them and tomatoes and all of them and just go through. And then I put the tops on them and I put them in the refrigerator. And then every day my lunch is made. I don't have to think about it. It's done. I set my system up for success. Um, you can do that with any meal. Backing up a step, you have to plant. You have to go to the grocery store and make sure you have everything you need for that meal planning. So make a list. Um, always have healthy food available, have healthy snacks available. If you're on dialysis and it is permitted, bring food with you to dialysis because if you, you know, if you're sat there for three to five hours and you didn't eat anything, when you leave, you're just going to want to go get the first thing because you're starving. Um, so try to bring something, even if, even if they won't let you eat on dialysis, even if you had it in your bag so that when you leave, you don't feel the need to go to fast food because you've got something right there, that is setting up your system for success. If let's just talk about other things, sleeping, go to bed on time, plan things out so that, you know, at a certain time you can go to bed, exercising, get up and move. When you wake up in the morning, have your shoes and your clothes ready. That is setting up your system. I'm going to put on my shoes and my clothes. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to exercise. Remember, you're a whole person. You're a whole body and you're worth taking care of. And so everything all works together. OK, further help. This is my newest book. I want to tell you about it. Um, you can scan the QR code right now if you would like to be able to find this one. Um, it is available on Amazon. However, it's a little tricky. I have two books. The first book I wrote was Plant Fed Kidneys. The story behind that is I knew all of these things. I had worked with all of these um, people and I'm sitting in church one day and my pastor says, are you holding information that could help people and you're not sharing it? And I was like, well, yes, I am. So I wrote the book because I wanted to raise awareness that, hey, there's all these people out here with declining kidneys and nobody's doing anything about it. And they're not getting referred to dietitians and they're not being told how to help their kidneys. So I wrote the book. It was really for practitioners, but all these patients read it from all over the world. I couldn't believe it. And so I, they said to me, we want more practical advice. We want recipes. They're not here. And so I was like, well, that's not why I wrote the original book. So you know what I did? I wrote one for the patient, just for you. People, patients also tell me, I don't cook. Well, you're going to need to cook a little bit. So what I did here is I made every recipe in this book, five ingredients or less. Now, if you are a fascinating cook and you love to cook, please feel free to add spices to these recipes. I made them as simple as possible for that person that tells me I don't cook and I don't want to. Also, every chapter or section is 10 pages or less because also a lot of people nowadays they don't want to read a big long book they just want you to get to the point so I tried to just get to the point there are patient stories in here to encourage you and like I said Dr. Joshi wrote the forward so I hope this helps you out some also I have an eight-week program where I teach tutorials going back over all these things that we talked about this is really for the pre-ESRD patient I'm trying to help you avoid the dialysis chair why did I do this? A lot of people want to work with a dietitian, but they can't afford it because insurance doesn't cover it very well, which really bothers me. So I wrote this because you know what? 
every person deserves. Every single person with kidney damage deserves nutrition instruction. You just do. And if your doctor's not giving it to you, or they're not referring you to a dietitian, or you can't afford a dietitian, this is an option for you. It's an eight-week program. It's $80. It's affordable. It's got video tutorials taught by me. It's got recipes. It's got meal planning tips. Um, and this is the QR code, or you can go to the um, address here for this program. If you want to contact me, if you didn't get any of that and you're like, well, where is it? Where can I find all this stuff? Okay. If you just go to plantfedwellness.com, that's where, um, that's my website and all of those programs are there and the links to the books are there both for the patient and the practitioner. Um, I'm also on Instagram. If you'd like to follow me there, I'd love to see you there. Or you can email me at jen at plantfedwellness.com. Okay. So let's summarize all this up. Plant-based nutrition is appropriate and beneficial for all stages of kidney disease, pre-end stage, all the way through to dialysis. For pre-dialysis, plant-based nutrition slows progression. And we want to do that. We want to keep you out of that dialysis chair. For dialysis, plant-based nutrition, plant nutrition improves wellness and reduces comor comorbidity risk. So if you're a dialysis patient, don't you give up. Keep living your life on dialysis and be as healthy as you can possibly be there. In all stages of kidney disease, plant-based nutrition is preferred for acid-based balance, for lowering inflammation, for gut health, for phosphorus control, for cardiovascular risk. And in all stages, protein needs can be met with plants and potassium can be controlled. Mm -hmm.